the year 1099, the first crusade against the Seljuk Empire and Fatimid Caliphate just ended, and the outcome was an astounding success for the Christian Crusaders, establishing four Crusader states along the Levant region, ranging from Edessa, modern-day Syria, to Eilat, modern-day Israel. The First Crusade was historically considered a success. After all, they did establish these states to protect the Christian inhabitants and pilgrims of the Holy Land, while also returning territory to the Byzantines. But, but this war wasn't all good things. Like, for example, the Holy Land, while retaken, got destroyed and got a great part of its population killed in the process making the pilgrimage to Jerusalem even more dangerous than before due to the lack of healthcare. If only there was someone to cure us, for we are so wounded to see you. Oh Deus, adiuvanos! And God must, must have listened, for the order of the Knights of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem was established in 1113, recognized by Pope Ashal through the papal bull Pie Postulatio Voluntatis, which stated that the order was now in church of the Hospital of St. John and of caring for the Christian pilgrims coming from far west. This was the sole mission of the order, hence the name Knights Hospitaller. As time passed, the order expanded their influence in Jerusalem, and with it, their objective. It shifted from only caring for arriving pilgrims to also providing an armed escort for them, quickly and imperceptibly becoming a militaristic force to be reckoned with, without losing the charitable character it possessed. After the fall of the Kingdom of Jerusalem in 1291, the knights sought refuge in the Kingdom of Cyprus. After realizing they were starting to get entangled in Cypriot politics, the Knights started to devise a plan. The idea was finding a new home for the Hospitallers, free of political tensions. So they looked for potential territories until they found the island of Rhodes, currently part of the Byzantine Empire. The plan wasn't executed until 1306, when the Knights landed on the island. And after four years of campaigning, the city of Rhodes surrendered to the knights. The holdings were organized into seven lands, ethno-linguistic divisions of the distribution of the order's members and possessions, divided by the crowns of Aragon, Castile, England, France, Holy Roman Empire, Italy and Provence. Each of these lands had an auberge in Rhodes as, it had, as its headquarters some of which still survive to this day in what is known as the medieval city of Rhodes, UNESCO World Heritage's biggest and best preserved fortified city in Europe. The city is surrounded by four kilometers of fortified walls and houses several hundreds of years old architecture, like the aforementioned auberges, which are located in both sides of the Street of the Knights, which remains as one of the finest testimonies of Gothic urbanism. Things were going great for the Hospitallers, at least until 1522, when they had to deal with a never-seen-before sort of force, the Ottoman Empire. Over 400 ships were approaching the island, under direct command of Suleiman the Magnificent. A hundred thousand Ottoman troops landed. Hopes of winning were low for the 7,000 Hospitaller troops. But after six months of fighting and ultimately losing to the Ottoman horde, their bravery was recognized and the remaining knights were pardoned, and while carrying their banners, marched out of the city, boarded Ottoman ships and sailed towards the Venetian island of Crete. After seven long years of moving from place to place in Europe, the knights, along with Pope Clement VII, were able to strike a deal with the King Charles V of Spain, which allowed the knights to settle in the island of Malta and Gozo in perpetual fiefdom 
for the cost of a single Maltese falcon each year. The island was a tough place to settle. After all, it was a small piece of limestone disconnected from Europe and with no natural resources. But the knights had experience with this type of island, so they did what they do best. Fortify, trade and sail. The most important thing the knights created in the island has to be La Valeta, also known as the Fortress City. It is located on Malta's southeastern coast, and it is Europe's southernmost capital and the smallest capital city. The architecture of this Maltese capital is inspired by Mannerist, Neoclassical and modern styles, and the use of limestone as main building material gives La Valera a very distinct look from other European cities. If there's any place I recommend visiting here, it has to be the St. John's Co Cathedral. It might not look very interesting from the outside, but wait until you see what's inside. It is full of gold and magnificent paintings from Caravaggio. And below the marbled floor lay the tombs of the Grand Masters of the Order of Malta and other nobles. Close to 400 of them are buried there, so it's a must-see for history lovers in Malta. There are many other places to see in Malta, but honestly, I think it's worth going there and exploring the island by yourself, so just go!